Okay, am I live? Yes, I'm live. Let's check out my lighting. Sorry, guys. First set of, first first live on the tripod for the day. Let me just set it up properly. Oops. Oh, sorry. Let's get that going. Am I live? Yes, I'm live. Let's check oh, out my God, I can hear myself again. That is just the worst. Let me get that out of the way. Got that, got that, got that, got that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Have I got anybody watching? I do. Hello. Okay, camera's in there. That's in there. <sighs> That's in there. How are we all on this lovely Saturday morning? Hello, Annalise, Kayleen, Tina, Tina. All right, so welcome to Saturday. There's that note pad I was looking for earlier. Um, welcome to Saturday. Today we are, we're doing a, uh, I'm doing my live this morning because we have got, we're doing part of the Great International Craft Show, number one. And number two, I wanted to show you guys a few really cool projects today and give you some free little mini classes. Um, so, uh, good morning to Tina's husband who apparently is also watching um, morning, Lynn. Morning, Sharon. Okay, enough with the mornings. Anyway, good morning to all of you. Let's do that. So today we have got 15% off all Lindy's products, 15% off stamps and 15% off stencils. Sorry. So that does exclude... Um, paper artsy and it does exclude the Natalie May scrapbooking product range as well um, and like I said I already give those to you at a fantastic price and I can't discount them anymore so jump online to nataliemay.com.au for today only the prices are automatically calculated at the checkout so while you are smooching around online jump onto the Facebook group um, Natalie May Scrapbook and Creative Community and join up there as well. Lots of cool things happening. So what I want to do today is I, um, I want to show you how to use Lindy's to create a little project similar to this. I created this project some time ago, um, back when I had no wrinkles and back when Fiona looked like that, because she doesn't now. Um, and this is a little canvas that I did, just a little round canvas. And I thought, I looked at this this morning and went, oh, I really love that. It's got some really cool and easy techniques on it. So I'm going to show you how to do this because it is full of really awesome, easy techniques. Um, and I use a combination of Lindy's Magicals, Lindy's Sprays and Lindy's Embossing Powders as well. Okay, so... Um, Lou, could you just shut that door a little, please, Dale? Thank you. So what I'm going to do first up is I'm going to talk to you very quickly about Lindy's embossing powders. I, I love Lindy's embossing powders. They are super easy to use, use, come in a great range of colours. And what I like about the Lindy's embossing powders is they are different to all of the others on the market because they have an amazing shimmer in them. So, for example, the ones that I have in stock at the moment, this is the Cool Man Copper. So, that's a gorgeous colour. Uh, chalk it up. And these are the chunky ones. So, these have got some incredible detail in them, as you can see. And these are all 15% off today. No more fingers and thumbs. Silence is Golden. This is probably my favourite. Um, and I do love this because... It's got glitter in it. It's got chunks in it. I'm trying to do this. Get it on screen properly. Hang on. Oh, there we go. So you can see that, how good that is. Um, this one is uh, Carefree Verdigris, and this has got a gold shimmer in it as well. Um, chip off the old black. So this has got a black base to it, but it's got this gorgeous shimmer all the way through. It's a chunky one. Um, Wowzers White is a really lovely solid white. So that's it on white. And of course, on black, 
you can see that it is a really it's, it's a super solid super solid white it's pretty awesome um chrome doesn't pay look at that that is just amazing so it is seriously called cool. chrome doesn't pay then we also have boogie down black this is the one that i'm using today and then give me five gold if you're after a really awesome gold this is it this is the one that you need to have it is lovely so they are the colors that i currently have in stock and there's a few other ones in stock as well so um, i'm going to be using today the clear that i have put down somewhere okay i'm not going to use the clear i'm going to go for what's in my hand uh, the other thing I've got here is I have a canvas. This is a canvas that is 10 by 12. I just found it in my stash. Um, I will grab a clear. Just chat amongst yourselves for just a second. Let me just pop that back in front of you while I just scrounge through my tub and find my clear embossing powder. gold 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 clear found it stop looking i could also use some white actually now i'm thinking about it all right so i'm going to be using something super simple and i'm going to create a bit of a resist technique in the background what i have done previously here's a little bit of the here's one i prepared earlier is i have heat embossed on watercolor paper with boogie down black the um, paper artsy big butterfly and then I also pre-stamped the leaves from another paper artsy one that I can't find so these ones here which are awesome. So I've pre-stamped those. So what I'm planning on doing is doing something very similar to this, but with these images. So I'm gonna make that my focal point and I'm gonna stick some leaves in and around it. What I'd like to do first is I'd like to do some em um, embossing on the background. Now embossing doesn't show up fantastic when we are doing this on camera. So please just bear with me a moment while we do this. I'm going to pop this, this stamp on here. This is another paper artsy one. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to use a embossing ink pad on the background to, um, to create a surface for the embossing powder to stick on. So it's a clear embossing pad. It has no color. What I am also going to do before I do that is I have an anti-static <laughs> they can't get out the bag um, and I'm just going to do a little of that and I just want to pop a little up there so what this is going to do um, is just create a bit of a surface so that the embossing powder doesn't stick to everything um, so in clear embossing ink pad is creating a surface for the powder to stick to and I'm just going to pop it in a few spots around here and then before that dries I'm gonna stick I'm gonna use actually I'm gonna use the wows as white I'm gonna use the white embossing powder and just tip it over the top and what's going to happen is that embossing powder is going to stick to that clear embossing ink and I'm just going to shake it off onto here and now I start to see all the bits I missed and I'm going to scoop on some more And tap it off and now I'm going to repeat that process on the bottom 
Now, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I will endeavor to catch all the comments and answer where I can. Um, there we go. That goes there. Now, I can't... All I can see where I'm stamping is there's a little bit of a... Um, like a bit of a watermark sort of thing going on. It's not going to be the focus. It's just going to be the area where um, we're going to use it as a bit of a resist, okay? So I'm just going to tip that over the top. Let that run down. And then, I don't know if you can see that where it's stuck to it. I just need to do it a couple more pieces because I need it to connect to the edge. It can't just be floating. It has to be connected to the edge because that's that's a me thing. It just it's more visually pleasing. So just shaking it off onto some scrap paper. And I might just pop a couple more up here. So the um, embossing ink pad that I'm using is from Couture Creations and it is the clear one. It's one that actually came in this week and I really like it because it's a little juicy. Uh, it's a really nice ink pad to use. All right. So what I need to do now is I'm going to funnel this back into, um, Diane's just asked the question, do I sell the little triangle, the little scoopy triangle? Yes, I do. Do I have it on the website? No idea, but um, I reckon I do. I've got some over there, don't I? Yeah. Are they on the website? I don't know. I'll have a look for you. Lou's just going to look into that. What are they called? Little triangle things. That's what they're called. So now I need to heat set that. So when we heat set that, we're going to melt all of these little crystals. So this takes just a second to do. So the Wowzers White is a flat white. So just getting my heat gun up to temp. And then it won't take long. So just chat amongst yourselves. Mm. I thought I did put them on, you know. But the trick is with heat embossing is you do need to melt all of those little crystals. Mini triangle trays. Okay, you need to look. If you're after one of those little triangle trays, do a search on the website for mini triangle tray. Okay, and you will find it and add it to your cart. We only have three left. And there's only three left, so run. Run! All right. I think you can probably see, well, I hope you can see, that all of, that, uh, all of those little crystals are melting. And that's what we want to happen. I'm watching it melt all of those little crystals so this wows is white is a really lovely flat white with no shimmer but like i said before what i love about lindy's is their embossing powders three quarters of them have a gorgeous shimmer to them so the clear the one called clearly clear is my go-to clear one of course um boogie down black is black but I'm just going for white on white here. Just so that I can create a resist technique in my background. So, um, sorry that this is so boring to watch, but if I could have pre-done it, then I would, you know, and explained it. But that's okay. Come on. 
So a bit of a tip when you're using your heat gun, the heat is really important. Um, moving it around like this doesn't really do as much. I'm one of these people who goes, right, let's just get it done. Heat, move on. Heat, move on. Moving it around rather than doing this all the time, I find it just doesn't do too much at all. How do you know if they're all melted? You do need to watch it. You can see it automatically turn and then you move on. Can you over melt? Absolutely. Will it burst into flames? No, you're an adult. You're a grown up. You won't let it burst into flames, but it is hot. I just need to get this last little bit down here that just doesn't want to melt. There we go. And then we will get to the good stuff. Come on. Right. The cool thing about this is, oh, that's hot, is that you should be able to run your finger over it, your hand over it, and any powdery bits, you'll know straight away if it's, um, if it's melted. Okie dokie. So what I want to do now is I want to add some color to my heat, preheat embossed images. So what I have got here, um, I, I stamped my images with my stamp press. Uh, I then used the, uh, and I stamped them uh, with the clear embossing ink and then the black embossing powder. And I stamped them a couple of times just to make sure that I had got a really good coating, a really good coverage of the ink, and then went back and heat set them. So you can see that they're heat set, they're shiny, they're super strong images, they look pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's get to Lindy's. So Lindy's Gang products, Lindy's Gang have been around for years and years and years, 20 something years. So they do, Three products really, really well. They do embossing powder that we're playing with today. They also do sprays. They do shimmer sprays and they do flat sprays. And then Lindy's also do magicals, which are the pigment dye-based powders that are fantastic. So they are a pigment dye-based powder means that they are full of color. The pigment means they're full of color the dye means they have a permanency to them and the powder means that you need to activate it to get the magic to happen so i'm going to be using them today in a with, with water just with water and puddling it and using it like a watercolor on my project i want to use a a few colors in my butterfly i want to make my butterfly nice and bright so i'm taking what have I got here? I've got some pinks and some purples and I've got some greens here, but I'm going to leave the greens and blues for the background. So what I'd like to do is make up a little wash. I've got my Nouveau spoon and I'm going to just pop a little bit in the palette here. So this color here is called high maintenance magenta and I'm putting in a tiny amount. So you can see here that high maintenance magenta, I mean, you could, Surely you saw that when I opened the pot, how shimmery and shiny that is, right? That is a starburst, which means that is super duper um, shimmery. This is also a starburst. This is called Witch's Potion Purple. And you can see that it's got a blue undertone. And clearly, I like this one a lot. There's another one called um, Sweet Violet Purple Teal that I use a lot very nice um, so the reason I'm going with pinks and purples which are not my normal color palette I know but the reason I'm going with that is because I've got a dark dark embossing I need a, a, a bright color to go in it so the two colors that I'm putting on now this one is called foxglove fuchsia and these are a flat magical they have no shimmer to them and then this one is Wild Rose Rouge. 
Now, a couple of these you can buy as singles on my website, and then um, you can also buy them in a set of five, which is much better value for money. So these ones here, the Flat Magicals of Wild Rose Rouge and Foxglove Fuchsia, they are part of the set called, I can't remember. I honestly, it's gone. All right. So what I want to do, you can see how much I've got in there. A very small amount. Yes, Karen, I'm using purple. Let it be known. So now I'm just adding a little bit of water. So just using a pipette just to tip that in there like that. So on the website, you'll find the magicals in sets and you'll find them as singles and you'll find them as shakers as well. Um... The shakers are great. They have got a flip top with a scoopy side and also a shaker side. So they will work exactly the same. So if I just tip some in here or tip a lot in there as the case may be and I can activate it. Ooh. And all of the shakers, they all have a fantastic shimmer to them. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I need to test these colours. I never, ever put it straight onto my page without doing a test first because I don't know what I'm dealing with here. I also have some paper towel handy and I've got my cup of water. And I've got a whole heap of other stuff here in front of me that apparently I don't need. Um, all right, so I'm just going to use my paintbrush just to give it a good stir in the bottom. And then I'm going to swatch them to show you how they look. So Magicals um, have been around for 20 plus years. They are not a new product on the market. Lindy's Gang is a family business based in Washington. They produce and manufacture and package everything at home in their garage. It is the ultimate family business um, and I have a huge amount of respect for the team at Lindy's. They are fabulous. They work super duper hard and they know their product. They understand how their products work and most importantly, they understand their customer base. They listen to what you guys want. Okay. So uh, they have employed me as their um, Australian master educator so what that means is it is up to me to show you how to use this cool stuff so you can see that i'm swatching these colors and when i bring it up to camera in a minute you'll see that the colors are all different but they're all going to work together okay so you can see those colors they are fantastic um, Rebecca, I don't know. I seem to have full coverage at this end. I would like to think that it's not me, it's you, babe, but who knows? It not, might just be the interweb playing up. I've been having a couple of little technology issues. All right, what I want to do now is I'm going to use my paintbrush and I'm going to go with something thinner. So I've got my Ulta New watercolour brush because we're using them like watercolours. I want to start colouring my butterfly and I'm just going to get it on, just colour in these areas. Um, because I'm working on watercolour paper, I have the ability to be able to move quite well. I, I can pause between adding colours and it's not going to soak in. Um, it's puddling. The, the heat embossing allows it to puddle in quite nicely and, and work really well. So the other really cool thing about Lindy's is that you with the Magicals, you have the ability to choose how pigmented your colour is. So in the little in the little pots, because you saw how much I added to here, it means that maybe it's my internet. Bloody hell. What's 
Oh, the girls are saying that it's um, pausing. I'll do a check in a minute and see if it is, if I'm on the right Wi-Fi. Um, so the, okay, so you have the ability to, to work out how, how light or how dark the colour is. So as you can see here, where I dabbed off the extra water, it stained the paper, but the colour's a little bit lighter. Um, girls, I'm just going to check my Wi-Fi. Hang on a sec. I'm just going to check here. Okay, I'm definitely on the right Wi-Fi. I do apologise if, um, if it, there's a problem coming through. It's one of those things I'm not able to control at this end. I've done, I've had a bit of a look. Um, okay, so the Lindy's Magical. So they are designed to go with just about everything. So you can mix them with water. You can mix them with um, modelling paste. You can mix them with paint. You can mix them with anything at all. The only thing they're not designed to do is they're not designed to be put into a spray bottle because they have a binder in them that binds them to your paper, which means that'll clog up your nozzle and make you swear like a truck driver. All right, so that's why Lindy's also do the sprays. Does that make sense? So there's a reason why they do the magicals and they do the sprays in the same colors. And that is because they are a different product. I mean, they're same, but different. Um, so you can see that I'm just, I hope I'm not making this look hard because I can tell you what, it's not. Just adding a little down in here and then pushing that teal into that blue. I'll bring that up to camera. Oh, you're watching it on TV, are you? Hope you didn't see my big noggin on TV this morning. Goodness me. All right, so now I'm going to do my flowers here in this super bright pink. So just choosing my petals. And I'm just allowing it to puddle. I want it to puddle. I don't mind that it, it's quite wet. Because it's watercolour paper, it's designed to take the water and and take uh, and then the water evaporates leaving the leaving the pigment and that awesome bright color in the paper okay so these are a product that i have been using for years and years and years i'm talking maybe seven years i know i've been an educator for lindy's for at least i don't know six um the only i mean i this is how much i use I, how much i love them i don't have any other sprays anymore um any other ink sprays the only ink sprays that i use are lindy's um, I, I tend to use these more than anything else. I find that this is all I really need in my collection. Um, I do have the Dina Wakely Gloss Sprays, but they are an acrylic paint spray. They are a different project. They're a different project. They're a different item. So um, I do think that this is the, the product that I absolutely love does all the things that I need it to do. Yes, Deb, I knew you would love this purple. So you can see the color palette that I've chosen are all colors that are going to work together. So colors that are alongside each other on the color wheel. I knew that they were not going to muddy up. I knew that they were going to work together and that I was working safe. And that's important to be able to get something visually pleasing straight off the bat, okay? So just mixing that in together. Um, and I've missed a bit in there. And the body of the butterfly, I've missed that too. Let's make it that colour. All 
All right, so I'm gonna bring that up to camera. You can see that I've left my leaves. I'll do my leaves in a green. I just need to make up a green wash. And I'm just gonna pop that aside for just a second. I'm gonna pop this tray of color aside and make up a little tray of greens as well. So, uh, cause I wanna do the, the leaf set. All right. So with the greens, I have got here a shaker in Lederhosen Laurel, which is a yellow based green. And that is way, way too much powder in there, but you get the gist. Um, I have also got Freaky Frankenlime. Where's my little spoon? Oh my God, here it is. Freaky Frankenlime. So this is out of the Halloween set, actually. It's one of my favorite greens. Um, no, that's this is Mountain Meadow Green. This one's Freaky Frankenlime. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of Delphinium Turquoise in there as well, just so that I have got a little bit of a blue base. Because I've got three greens here that are probably going to be a little similar. And again, I will test them before I start. Activate. Oh, with slightly pink water, but you know, that's okay. Blue. Green. Um, okay, so now I want to give these a little stir and I'll just give them a stir with my brush as I go. And let's swatch them and have a look. Oh, lovely. See, that's a different green. And then we've got this one here. And then we've got that blue. So they're the colours that I've chosen for my leaves. All right, so before I do my big leaves, I will do, I will do these ones. Brush is too big, small brush. And I like that I can just puddle the color in. It, um, I don't have to worry about kind of keeping it inside the lines too much. It automatically does it with the I'll do it up really close here. It automatically does it with, where am I? Here we go. With the embossing, because it kind of gives it a well to sit in. All right, so you can see how that just. And I've got a fairly well loaded brush here. All right, so that's how easy it is to do it when you have got a heat embossed stamped image. Getting it on there, and then I'm going to do this background next. And I forgot to make up a yellow, so let's make up a yellow quickly. So, the, actually, no, I'm going to use the spray instead. Instead of making up a yellow, I've got Pineapple Paradise, which is the colour that is in the Caribbean Cruise, Caribbean Crush set. And I'm just going to dip my brush straight in. Um, the this is probably the First, this is the first set of Magicals that I ever purchased and sprays was the Caribbean Crush set and it's a non-shimmer set but they are the set that have got all the super bright colours in it. Loving it and I forgot to do the middle of that flower and the middle of that flower. All right. So I'm just going to pop that aside to dry and I'm just going to whip through these big leaves here for you. So for those of you who have just tuned in, I've heat embossed these with um, Boogie Down Black embossing powder from Lindy's and I used a Paper Artsy stamp. So I'm just mixing a couple of greens here, getting it on there. And how do I add a blue in? Less is best, but I can just drop a little blue while it's wet. And it's very puddled. The reason why it's very puddled is because I really do want that watercolor, that watercolor effect.
that organic look. All right. And just popping a little blue in just because I can. Mixing these greens up and it's um, lovely and bright. So the reason it's so bright is of course because it's the pigment dye based powder. The greens that I have chosen are very vibrant greens and I can control the color by the amount of powder that I added to my, my paint palette. So a paint palette is absolutely vital when you are creating like this so that you can mix up. So you can find some paint palettes for super cheap on the website in the tools section. And also in the tools section, you will find brushes like, um, not this particular one, this is one of my favorite little personal ones, but you will find some great brushes that are very, very similar. And you will find the Nuvo Spoon as well. I do believe we've got some of those in stock. And um, they are really, really handy tools to have when you are doing this sort of technique. So as you are building your, your cart today and, and buying the Lindy's because they're 15% off, um, I highly recommend investing in a paint palette. I think I've got round ones in stock. Yeah. Um, and a Nuvo spoon as well. Highly recommend that. So just a tip with your, when you are heat embossing, a couple of things to getting heat embossing looking fantastic is making sure that your ink pad is nice and inky and juicy and clean. Especially when you're using a clear embossing powder, having a juicy, clean, A juicy, clean ink pad makes all of the difference, okay? So I'm just going to pop that aside to dry as well. Um, this guy is drying up quite nicely, and I'm going to start working on my background now. So uh, for inspiration, I'm using this one here. All right, so I'm just going to bring that up to camera for you to have a look at. While I have a little rehydration break. And what I want to do is I want to puddle the colours in a in a um, an, on an angle on my page. So when I'm putting my colours on, I have chosen if I'm looking at the colour palette that I've got with got here, I've got this purple pink concoction, and I've got the green leaves. So I want my background to to work really nicely. So I want to choose something. I'm going to go for. A couple of blues so I have got a navy blue here in a shaker in Bavarian blue and I'm going to make up a little palette here mm -hmm. Bavarian blue is just oh lovely and I'm going to use the greens as well okay so how do we do this how do we make this happen we will make this happen by, oh, and I want a little bit of that teal that we used before, time travel teal. So I'll use that one here. So what I want to do is I want to use a, a large brush. So I want to use a brush that's going to hold a lot of liquid. So a brush like this one. And I've got some water handy and I want to puddle on my colors. And this is really important to do. I always start with the lightest color so I know, oh, I haven't swatched, hang on. I know that these are the colors I want to use, right? So I've got that one, that one, and that one, which these two are very similar, but this has got a gold shimmer to it, and that one has a silver shimmer to it. So I want to, and I'll probably add some green to it actually, actually. Why don't I start with that? That's a good idea. So I'm going to puddle and I'm going to do this 
sort of blotchy color. I've got a water spray here and I'm just going to dilute those edges. Just by spraying and diluting those edges, it's made this softer. All right, so if I just brush it on like that, and then I get my spray, my water, and just dilute those edges, not too much water, just enough that it's taking away the brush marks, okay? Let me just bring it up to camera to show you. See how it's diluted the brush marks? That's what we want. And I haven't got enough water on here that it's running. I'm just wanting to add enough that I get a uh, get rid of those brush marks. So that's my edges. Now I'm going to work in the middle. So I have these blues. And I know that I can come back down into here because my butterfly and my leaves is gonna, are going to come down in here. And I'm just pushing ever so gently those colours into each other. I've got a really loaded brush. A really loaded brush makes all of the difference. I'm puddling rather than making brush strokes, okay? Allowing it to puddle on top makes the colours dry in lots of different layers. And now I can show you what I mean. So there's all of those different layers of colour. And you can see how that embossing powder that we did earlier is working as a resist. I've got a line here that I don't love. I'm just going to spray that and let the water take it away. Just puddling it because it's a canvas and it's a, uh, a pre-primed canvas, which means the water's not gonna soak right into it. I'm just going to do that. It's got a little bit of a bend in it actually, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna let that dry. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do this top bit. What I am going to do actually is just take a little off. So taking a little off means I'm just going to use the corner of my paper towel and soak it, soak it up into the corner only because it's sitting on top of my embossing powder there. All right, so now I wanna do the same thing up here. So again, I'm gonna start with that green that I used. And again, I'm using all cool colors that are working together. So even if I just brush it on like that, dilute the edges. Um, Rebecca's just commented saying, I love putting the shakers straight onto the paper and then spray with water to get the colors to show up. Well, Beck. That's what I'm doing this afternoon. So make sure you pop back and we're going to be creating some backgrounds. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. How am I going for time? All right, I need to whip through this a little faster. So puddling it on just like that, letting those colors kind of flow into each other, grabbing this other teal puddling this on, pushing it up there. I wouldn't add purple to this because purple and green, if I accidentally touch them together, don't make a very visually pleasing combination. They look awful. So you need to make sure that you think about the colors that you're adding while it's wet because you don't want to make mud, okay? You want to keep it looking pretty. And now I'm just gonna quickly heat set that. And I've left that middle like that because my butterfly is gonna go there. And I'm gonna add some splatters in a minute as well. So quickly just do that. And there's two more steps I need to do. I need to add a little background stamping to this and I'll explain why in a moment. And then I need to cut out my elements 
so I might just pop this aside so it doesn't drip everywhere and I'll just let it air dry that is pretty dry that's nearly dry so I'm quickly going to cut out this butterfly while I am waiting for the others to dry um, yeah, so this afternoon, uh, I've got two more live Facebooks to do today. So today we are going to uh, be exploring Magicals and the other Lindy's products. I'm going to do a scrapbook layout with stencils and Lindy's at 1.30. I'm going to um show you some great things that you can do with the the lindy's colors with stencils and i might even crack out the moon shadow sprays because they are super nice to use maybe go a little vintagey but i think it's definitely time for a scrapbook layout um and i'll do that at 1 30. then i'm going to at 4 30 Seeing it's a Saturday afternoon, it might be a, a 4.30 glass of wine situation. What do you reckon, guys? Is it too early for wine at 4.30, Louise? No. No. Oh, you're not going to be here. You're going to be at netball. No. Oh, that sucks to be you, doesn't it, darling? But that's okay. I'll have, a, I'll have a couple of glasses for you. Yeah. <laughs> Start without me. Start without you. Um, and so that is happening this afternoon at 4.30. And I'm going to be doing the Sprinkle and Spritz backgrounds. Oh, that could be an interesting combination with wine. Um, yeah, Wendy's just commented on how pretty this, um, this uh, butterfly is. Agreed. There are, I think, a total of three different paper artsy butterflies that I have in stock at the moment. Um, and paper artsy products are not on special because they are so stinking new. And I am giving them to you at the best possible price that I can at the moment anyway. I cannot discount them any further. Um, so, yes, there are... Whoops, that one's a little tight on the cutting. All right. So, yes, 15% off of um, stamps and stencils today and Lindy's products. So this will be the opportunity for you to stock up on your Lindy's. Um, and, oh, for goodness sakes, Natalie, get in there. I had to pick something super detailed, didn't I? This one, uh, I should just be able to whip around this side now. And because it's a little warm in the studio today, it hasn't taken long for this to dry and for the water to evaporate and oh good there's still a couple of you watching yeah um <laughs> oh welcome back chrissy mannix how are you this morning doll rumor to, rumor has it that you've got one of those uh, little small people brewing in your belly is that correct congratulations darling now I know you mentioned yesterday that you couldn't buy something because you had to buy a baby seat. <laughs> I know. I can sympathize. I can't, I can't be bothered cutting that out. I'm just going to cut it off. Nobody knew it was supposed to be there. Um, congratulations on your small person brewing. 35 weeks. Oh, my goodness. It's brewed. That's well and truly cooked. That's fantastic. When are you due? Oh, 35 weeks. You might have it on my birthday. Oh, no, that'd be early. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> for me, not necessarily you. Oh, it'd be awesome for you too. And you could name it Natalie. You don't have to tell me, but do you know what you're having? Are you able to buy pink stuff or blue stuff? Can I tell from your orders what you're having? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I do remember being pregnant. Wasn't my favourite part of my life. 
but I have a fabulous Lee temperamental 17 year old that I'm very grateful for at the moment. No, she's wonderful. We love Jessica. All right. Oh, I need those. I need the antenna. Okay, the antenna. I'm just going to be a bit cheeky and go, oh, look at that. That's great. Early May. Yeah, wonderful. My dog's inside doing zoomies, Louise. Is that what I can hear? That's the, um, as far as it goes with me having any more kids. Not having any ovaries helps with that. So, speaking of which, while we're fussy cutting here, and while you're all watching me struggle with a pair of scissors, um, ovarian cancer is in the spotlight again at the moment. Does anyone follow Celeste Barber on Instagram? Louise and I do religiously. We just think she's fantastic. So Celeste is uh, currently the white shirt spokesperson for witchery and ovarian cancer, um, which is fantastic because as most of you know, I beat ovarian cancer a few years ago and um, it is the one of the hardest cancers to to diagnose because there's no testing and not a lot of whole, not a whole lot of symptoms for it either. So, um, so yeah, she is an absolute rock star at the moment for creating awareness for ovarian cancer, which is fantastic. And um, for those of you who aren't aware of my little journey with ovarian cancer if you jump onto my blog which is happy dax h-a-p-p-y-d-a-k-s dot blogspot dot com oh, i don't need that bit um there you'll find my story up in the top menu i will link it up a little bit later um so it is a, it's an interesting read, but it is all there. But most importantly, it's all about gaining awareness for ovarian cancer. It's about sharing, sharing my story and sharing and, and learning how the symptoms for ovarian cancer, uh, what they are and how they uh, and, and how you can help with research as well. Um, ovarian cancer has a very low has a high what's the, what am I trying to say it's got a high mortality rate doesn't it it do, it's not it's not great it's, it's high, got a low mortality it's got a low mortality rate no no more people die from ovarian cancer than survive so it's got a oh yeah okay it's not great that's the bottom line. So, um, I'm, I've just been asked to be a guest speaker at a Cancer Council Biggest Morning Tea event in uh, June as well, which is fantastic. So, if you are Adelaide-based, I will be posting a link for tickets to that as soon as I can. Um, and we will be... I will be doing a little... I might look at doing a little fundraiser early June as well. Um, just because coming up into July, it will be a few years since I was diagnosed and it's about then that I start to remember all of that stuff again and it all cut, starts coming to the forefront. So I like to bring it all back to everybody else's awareness. Thank you, Chrissy. High mortality rate, low survival rate. I know. Okay. It's been a big morning already. All right, so this has dried up beautifully. I'm just going to take off some of this wetness with my heat tool. Uh, and I'm, I'm really liking where this is going. And then I'm going to add some splatters. So I'm just going to, I'm just puddling with my paintbrush, just letting this extra liquid soak into my paintbrush. And then I'm going to splatter in just a moment. Let's get these bits out the way. And I'm going to multitask this. I'm going to get my butterfly out the way. 
and then I'm going to splatter and heat gun at the same time. You watch me go. All right, we're in an hour. We're up to an hour. Let's get that out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. So I want this to be dry first before I splatter because I want my splatters to sit on top of these colors and not meld in with my background. And that's really important because Lindy's have got that um, fantastic pigment dye based powder. They sit really, really well on top of each other. And I love that. All right, let's do it. So I've got my paintbrush here and I'm going to start with some green. And it's a finger tap. And then I'm going to dry. And then I'm going to go with time travel teal. Come on, dry. And the drying in between, and as you go, makes a massive difference to this whole finished piece, okay? And now I'm grab grabbing some of that Bavarian blue, that lovely blue that you can see there. Drying, drying. Um, someone asked me the other day, can I use a, a hair dryer instead of a heat gun if I don't have a heat gun? No, because it's just gonna blow it everywhere. It's not the same, okay? So if you don't have a heat gun and you're a crafter and you wanna try some mixed media, highly recommend getting hold of, or investing in a heat tool. They're only say 30 to 40, 50 bucks, something like that, but they're, they're gonna last and that's important. All right, so you need a, um, a, a tool that's going to last you. Um, Michelle Thomas has just commented. Hello, Michelle. Yeah, and I, haven't, I can't read the whole thing. I hope... Oh, I have to read the whole thing. Hang on. Her sister has diagnosed tiny speck in her ovary. Um, so, Michelle, did your sister beat ovarian cancer? How has her journey gone? Um, you haven't said there, and I don't want to say something out of school. Oh, you did. It says it at the top. Your sister-in-law beat it as well. Fantastic. That is wonderful that she's beaten that. So um, I wish her all of the luck. Okay. Can you see my background? Let's look at that layering. So you can see what drying it off in between does, especially here. Like You can see that. That's an awesome effect. So the white in the background is that white embossing powder that, um, that we popped on earlier, which is great. And what I want to do now is because I'm going to be putting this heavy black on it, which is fabulous, it's all sorts of fabulous, but it needs some other black in the background. So I'm going to use a really fine circle stamp from Paper Artsy, one of these little mini ones. And I'm just going to add just a little around my project. It needs it, and I don't wanna do it in my white space. I need to do it over my colored area, it's super important. I'm keeping, like this is my, my island and my water. I don't wanna put anything on my island. All right, to quote the super talented Fiona Paltridge. She taught me that. And I don't want to use it as a solid edge to edge stamp either. I want to use it as a partial so that it looks effortless rather than forced. All right, that works for me. Dun, dun, dun. I can see that. Okay, let's put the lid back on that. Let's get my butterfly. This guy's going to go here. Okay, so theoretically, I could have put a bit more colour in here. Bugger. Okay. 
I should have just gone to the middle, shouldn't I? Louise has gone inside to check on the dogs. They are in there doing zoomies. Trevor's gone to Bunnings to with a to-do list for me. That's better. Um, and the dogs are going absolutely crazy inside. So funny. It's one of those you have to be there situations, I'm sure. Um, okay. <laughs> um, all right. So there we go. So the no judgment postage we've got happening all this weekend, which is when we put all your orders together. That's one thing here that we make sure that we specialize for you is we make sure that you only have to pay the postage one time over the weekend for orders under three kilos. Um, we have a big t a two, three big trestles in front of us of all of your orders. And to give you a bit of an idea what happens next is on Monday, I sit down and go through every bag and tick everything off myself to make sure that we've got everything in there. And then we will uh, package it all up, gift wrap it just for you, and to then make sure that we get it in the post to you either Monday or Tuesday. Any local ladies who live here in Adelaide who have opted for pickup, you will be notified uh, probably Wednesday for pickup for your order. I'm unable to get them to you sooner, um, but we will certainly endeavor to do our best. Okay, I like this, this is going well. So now I just need to think about how it's gonna sit with the leaves. I want a couple of leaves coming out the side. And I'm gonna head down in this sort of, oh, I forgot to cut those other leaves out. I might just do that off camera. You don't need to see me fussy cut anymore. Nobody needs that in their lives. Um, but there we go. So that is our, yes, Nairi, I do. Look in the tools section. Nairi's looking for small magnets for mini albums. Yes, babes. Um, okay, so that is what we are looking at doing. I could probably do with, um, so I'm going to pop in these leaves and pop these leaves up in here uh, and I'll pop a word on there as a title as well in a moment. So there you go, almost finished. Um, I'm loving that background. It has worked really, really well. So just to recap, for those of you who have just tuned in, what have we done? We have heat embossed with Lindy's embossing powder, our, our butterfly images and our leaf images um, in Wowzers, or no, what is it? Black, boogie down black embossing powder. We then use the Paper Artsy stamps in white embossing powder on the back. And what's happened is it's created a resist and that is fantastic. We are uh, also used the Lindy's Magicals in the pots and the shakers. And I also use the sprays to color our images with a paintbrush. So let's bring that up to camera so you can see that gorgeous, super vibrant color. And then we puddled onto the background our wash of color as well. So thank you so very much for tuning in. I'm going to sit here and cut these, fussy cut these out and stick it all down. If you can give me 15, 20 minutes, I'll post a photograph online to show you. So don't forget today only, you are looking at 15% off of stamps and stencils. Paper Artsy products and Natalie May scrapbooking products are excluded from the sale. Um, the Lindy's products are also 15% off today. So they are embossing powders, they are sprays, and they are magicals. I will be back at 1.30 doing a scrapbook layout. I haven't really thought that through yet. I might do something bright. I might do something vintage. Votes, ladies. Votes, bright or, or vintage. Moon shadow sprays, the more vintagey sort of look, or shall we just go all out bright? What do you reckon? Come on, girls, give me something. Give me something. I'm undecided. I can't work out what I want to do today. Brights, vintage. Oh, God, here we go. 
vintage, vintage, bright. Oh, okay. Okay, bright. I'll have to get Louise to count the votes. I suppose I could do two layouts. Do both. Thanks, Nari. Exactly right. I don't know. We'll have a bit of a look. We'll see what you all say. Pop your vote in. Bright or vintage for the scrapbook layout at lunchtime. Seems you may have to do both, Pina says. <laughs> Penis, Pina, you are correct. I probably will end up doing both. Maybe I will do the same layout in two different styles. Oh, God, you guys make me work. And I'll use... I know what I will use. I will use the new Natalie May scrapbooking stencils that you all need in your lives. What do you reckon, guys? All right, so that's it from me. If you can give me 15 or so minutes, I will finish this project and pop a photo up online and I will link it, of course, to all the products that I have used today. So jump online, guys, nataliemay.com.au. Um, I look forward to all seeing you back here at 1.30 Adelaide time um, for another arty waffling session. So <laughs> thanks, guys. See ya.